Welcome to our midweek Bible study for this Tuesday. As I have changed my uh, ways of doing things, I'm also now filming in my office as something different. I will be doing uh, the Old Testament lesson on Tuesdays and the Epistle lessons on Thursdays as I normally preach on the Gospels week in and week out. If you need to know anything that's going on with our church, PeaceLutheranPGH.org, please contact us and we can help you in any way possible. Our text for this today comes from Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his planted plantings. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed. For righteousness, but behold, an outcry. Now, as a note, the uh, if you know the... Uh, gospel lesson was last Sunday. It was the parable of the uh, man who owned a vineyard and sent his son, and they killed the, uh, the, the son to take over the vineyard. Um, the Old Testament and the gospel lesson are always connected. Uh, they are designed that way. The epistle never is. It accidentally happens on occasion, but it's not. So this text was written, or excuse me, picked specifically because of the gospel. And Jesus is talking about a vineyard once again. And when he goes to the vineyard, he seeks righteousness and goodness, and he finds uh, the opposite of it, bloodshed. Now, it reminds me of when I was an army chaplain talking to young soldiers before they went off to basic. We had a training unit for the North Dakota National Guard to help these men get ready and women to get ready to go to basic, learn to march, wear the uniform, etc. And I came in and spoke and explained what the chaplain was and what we can do for them. And one of the things I said to them is military training is designed that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. You're going to do wrong. That's okay. The sergeant or the officer, mostly the sergeant, is going to yell at you. Uh, then they're going to give you punishment. Now, if you say, yes, sergeant, do the punishment and then move on quickly, it is forgotten very quickly. However, for those people who wanted to argue with the sergeant, they were in for a world of hurt. The military was going to um, teach you discipline. When we go to God, we go to him with a certainty that we are fallen and broken people, and we need him. In fact, even in confirmation this last week, as we were going through the commandments, I was explaining to the children that if you do not think you need God, if you think you are good and perfect, then Jesus will make no sense to you. But in this text, it goes a little bit deeper than that. It says that we cannot lie to God. We can lie to each other. We can lie to ourselves. But when you're standing in front of God, when you're standing in front of the judgment seat of Jesus, you do not get to lie. God knows the truth. Jesus, in our parable for the gospel, looks at the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, and says, I know it's in your heart. It is evil. You plan to kill me. When you die and go to heaven, you cannot look to Jesus and say, well, let me explain the evil I have done. It will not go well. Thanks be to God that those who follow Christ, you and I, we do not go to God and put before him our righteousness. Instead, we put Jesus' righteousness in front of him. We rely on his forgiveness and that we are his children and that the uh, kingdom that we live in, his kingdom, we are not bloodshedding people. We are not evil people. We are forgiven people. We are people of God. So, one of the most important lessons here is you can fool other people. You can even fool yourself. But you are not fooling Jesus. Trust in him. Seek his righteousness. And know that the kingdom of God is made by people like us, who Christ has knitted together as his chosen people. God's blessings to you. I hope you stay safe and healthy during this pandemic. And let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the forgiveness that you have given us through Jesus. Remove the uh, lying in our hearts so that we can see when we reflect on the, the law that we need you as our Savior. Dear Lord, protect us from those who do violence and evil against us. Dear Lord, help us to shoulder the burden of the hatred that would come our way because we follow Christ. Be with us and protect us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen.